Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. Tarry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland, and in the shape of Corin sat all day, playing on pipes of corn, and versing love to amorous Phyllida. And never since the middle summer spring we meet the mortal again. By dale, by forest, by paved fountain or rushy brook, or on. I cannot continue. I think I detect a little agitation from behind. What is this? Who dares to agitate Mr. Crummel's fairy king? I do. <gasps> and what is your grumble, sir? He is. I was once this company's Romeo. The romantic lead. But now look at me. Reduced to nothing more than a fairy cobweb. <laughs> what have you got to say for yourself, sir? Mr. Lenville, I play the parts I'm told to play. Nothing more. You should refuse them, sir. And why should he do that, sir? Because I say so, sir. <laughs> Mr. Lenville, if my plain Romeo and Lysander distresses you, I'll happily hand them back. You I've... do no such thing, Mr. Nickleby. You'll play the parts as publicized. By what right, sir? Oh, look to the ladies, sir. Mr. Nickleby's face is our good fortune. You embarrass me, ma'am. You will be. What are you doing? I'm going to pull your nose, sir. <gasps> Mr. Crumbles. Pull my nose? Yes. In the presence of the company. <laughs> You lay one hand on my nose, sir. And... Oh, my face. I'm ruined. My best side, my prince's profile. Come, Mr. Lenville. Let us shake hands and forget it. Never. Mr. Lenville, shake his hand. Never. Ever. If you do, Mr. Lenville, you can play Hamlet at Harwich, Chelmsford and Reading. Very well. Places, places, ladies and gentlemen, please. Let us continue with our midsummer's reverence. As I said at the time, Kate, a dressmaker's shop is the last description of business to which you should have thought of attaching yourself. I do not reproach you, my love, but if only you had consulted with your own mother. Well then, Mama, what do you recommend now? Recommend? Uh, well, that's obvious. Tomorrow morning I shall pay a visit to your uncle. No, please, my uncle has done quite enough. Nonsense. He's a devilish pretty gal. They can't, you can't deny it. I suppose he is, my lord. Then tell me, where does the beauty live? Oh, no good can come of it. She is a country girl at heart. She's not wise to London life. She's been virtuously and well brought up. Look at a pretty gal without harm, mate. Indeed, he may. Well, then. You know, you're making a fortune out of me, Nickleby. I shall never do business with anyone else, if you tell me. Oh, come on, out with it, man. Where does Miss Kate Nickleby live? Oh. Mrs. Nickleby to see you, sir. Good morning, brother-in-law. Mrs. Nickleby? I say, hello. Stay there, ma'am. Well, this way, sirs. Uh, is this Mrs. Nickleby the mother of Miss Nickleby? A delightful creature we had the pleasure of meeting at dinner. Yes, indeed. No. This lady is far too young for that. <sighs> Kate Nickleby is indeed my daughter. Her daughter, my lord? Why? I won't believe it. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's true. And how is your daughter today, ma'am? I'm afraid she's a little downhearted, sir. I'm not sure why. Perhaps she's suffering from something. I, myself, I suffer constantly from them. Then perhaps you will allow us to escort you and your daughter to the opera, ma'am. Oh, the opera? Yes, Mozart. Do you like him, ma'am? I, I like anyone who is musical, my lord. Good. That settled it, then. <sighs> Head up. How's the memory, Smike? Uh, it comes and goes. 
Do you remember your first day in Yorkshire? Was it Mr. Squeers first brought you to the school? No. No. Another man. It's important if we're to find out who you really are. I remember a room, a lonely room where I slept. Will we chore and beginners, please? Mr. Nickleby, Mr. Emaciated Apothecary, make haste. A public pickens. My dear creature, why do you keep up this show of displeasure? How, how dare you speak to me in this manner? You're pretty in a passion. I like it, Mum. I hold you in the bitterest contempt, sir. And I intend to hold you like this, Mum. <laughs> Let me go! And where would you go, Miss Nickleby? Hmm? There's nowhere to go. You have no one. Kate! What's wrong? Your daughter's a little flushed, Mum. I have been wronged, Uncle. And by your friends. I have no friends, girl. Day after day, I am compelled to assume the appearance of cheerfulness. I have no one to protect or advise me. Mama supposes these are honourable men. I cannot deceive her any longer. I need your help, Uncle. How can I help you, child? You have some influence with these men. We're connected in business, nothing more. I cannot afford to offend them. Uncle. I trusted you. We all have our trials, Kate. And this is yours. Riches and power are the only true source of happiness. Some young ladies would be proud to have such gentlemen at their feet. Gentlemen? Oh, Uncle. Please. Listen to me. My home is a lonely one. If you would only consent to make it your home, too, it would bring me so much comfort. A little light. To grant some of the sweet nature that I know you have. Never, Uncle. There's something of that boy's blood in you, I see. My father's blood, yes. And I am proud to know it, Uncle. Very well. And I cannot help you, Kate. Thank <laughs> you. 
What a performance. And a very good house. Oh. <laughs> On Monday morning. Play silence for Monsieur Crummles. Thank you. <laughs> On Monday morning, we shall read a new piece. Oh. Everyone shall have a good part in it. Ah, Mr. Nickleby here will see to that. Sorry? You will write us a new piece, sir. I, I don't think I can write anything for Monday morning, Mr. Crummles. Tish tosh, why ever not? Well, it's too soon. I haven't the invention. Rubbish. Do you understand French? A little. Very good. Toss him a manuscript, my dear. Uh, there. Turn that into English and put your name on the title page. Tis a fortified firecracker. A veritable hit, sir. <laughs> I'll do my best. And now, a toast. <clears throat> What's this? Autographs? A letter, sir, from Mr. Nickleby. Well, there's your man over there. What's my part, Mr. Crummles, in the new play? You, Mr. Lenville, why you turn your wife and child out of doors, and in a fit of rage and jealousy, you stab them both in the forest. And me, Mr. Crummles, what's my part? You are a troubled wretch, filled with remorse. You are overcome, burst into tears, and then, after a very long, disturbing hiatus, you transform and become a virtuous, exemplary character for us all. Oh, very good. Get the curtain down on that, Mr. Crummles, and it'll be a triumph. To be sure, Miss Professor, to be sure. And now, a toast to Mr. Nickleby. Mr. Nickleby! I must go. Whatever is the matter? This letter, it comes from London. The Drury Lane? No, Mr. Newman Knox. Never heard of him. Does he play the Haymarket? He's my uncle's clerk. Spike? Mr. Lengo. Thank you for everything, Mr. and Mrs. Crummles. Goodbye. face here, sir. I'm looking for my mother and sister. After all I've told you, you return to London, and still with that boy you've abducted. Come here. You leave him alone. My mother and sister, sir, you'll please tell me where they are. They are living in the house that I have provided for them, enjoying my care and support. <laughs> if you've taken care of them as you did me, then I pity them. I warn you, boy, for their own good, stay away from them. <laughs> I understand why she's called a kitchen witch. Because she spreads like butter. <laughs> what a hot day in August. <laughs> and she smells uncommon similar, my lord. <laughs> Toast to little Kate Nickleby. Little Kate Nickleby. Little Miss Nickleby. <laughs> I'm afraid the old woman, her mother, has grown so jealous of her, she's locked her away. Oh, <laughs> an infernal cunning. Tell him that's better. I can do anything with the old lady. She believes anything I say. Unlike her uncle. Still, at least the old man introduces to her. <laughs> Miss Kate Nickleby. Kate, Kate Nickleby. Nickleby. I'd like a word with you, sir. A mysterious stranger upon myself. <laughs> Will you step aside? Name your business or leave the table. Your name and address, sir. I shall give you neither. I am the brother of the young lady who has been the subject of your derision. <laughs> if you have a friend at this table who is a gentleman, then he will spare your disgrace and give me your name. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Very well, I will follow you home. Oh, uh, will you? Yes. Good Lord. Well, what is that? <laughs> uh, a friend. <laughs> a friend! Make yourself known to me, sir. Get out of my way. I will follow you. We'll be horsewhipped if you do. You are a scoundrel. And you are an errand boy, for all I know. I'm the son of a country gentleman. Ah! I'm your equal. Will you or will you not answer for your brutal and unruly conduct? No. What are you doing? You will not leave, I swear it! Not until you tell me who you are! Let go of me, I tell you! No! Ah! Sister Newman. I must go to them. No. Rest. You're all wet through. There's some dry clothes in my bag. Your uncle is not going to like this. Those two gentlemen were friends of his. Look at me. I should be a laughing stock, Nickleby. May I say how grieved I am that any relative of mine, although disowned by me, should have inflicted such punishment. Punishment? Yes. And I see it's been a severe one. Not as severe as the blow my friend here is about to serve on you, Nickleby. I don't understand. Edisoft? I'm taking my business elsewhere. <clears throat> Lord Verisoft has decided to borrow his money from someone else. What about the money he already owes me, my lord? His outstanding debts of some 3,000 pounds. You can wait. Compensation? Compensation? For this and your broken promises. What promises? That very expensive disappointment, your little niece. Your nephew's behaviour has upset a great many people. Influential people. I will have my money from you, sir. You can depend on that. How did it go? Did you tell the old goat? Yes, I did. Good. Now to find his nephew. What are you doing, Hawk? You must not seek revenge. And who will prevent me, sir? I will, if I must. I believe the sister is a virtuous lady. And the brother acted as he should. Look to your business, boy, and leave me to look at mine. This is my business. I make it my business. This is a public argument, Hawk. I will not stand for it. Well, then get out of my sight, sir. For where is the wisdom in talking to a coward? A coward? You call me a coward, sir? Yes, sir, I do. What do you say, gentlemen? <laughs> do you agree? <laughs> Steady, what's here, Sir Mulberry? He goes, sirs! Have I a friend here? He struck me! Yes, I struck you, sir. See here, gentlemen. Lord Verisoft is no coward. What do you say, sir? Huh? I say, let this quarrel be ended. I 
I'm so happy you've returned. I promise you'll never leave us again. I promise, Kate. Your uncle, he is a brute. And to think I had his ceilings whitewashed at the expense of one shilling, which is the most distressing thing. Oh, I cannot believe it. Everything I tell you is true, Mother. And that's a Mulberry Hawk, such a monster. Why, I was congratulating myself every day on his being your admirer, Kate. I know, Mother. Let me introduce my fellow traveler and affectionate friend. Smike? Good morning, sir. Good, good, good morning. Oh, my goodness. Perhaps I, I, I should go leave you with your family. From now on, you are family, Smike. This is all too much for me. Really, it is. Nicholas, you must go to your uncle at once and ask him to explain himself. The time for talking is over, Mother. We must disown him. Your honour and Kate's good name demand it. Surely you see that. Oh, where will we go? How will we live? Oh, dear. Are you both ready? Ready. Ready. Very well. Proceed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fire! to the Thames Street house, uncle. What I did for your sister, I did with a good heart. You have no heart. All you care about is money. Good day to you, sir. I'm going. And I see no reason why we should ever meet again. Be careful, sir. You've already made some powerful enemies in this city. And you among them. I will not have my reputation played with. What reputation? Your life is a lie. So like my brother. All the eloquence of a country parson. My father was an honorable man, sir. Yes, sir, and a poor one. Do you imagine that you're capable of looking after your mother and sister? You have nothing, you are nobody. And if I have my way, sir, this is how the matter will stand. I'm not frightened by your threats. I make no threats, boy. Good day. Uncle. Road sweeper, pot washer, knock her up. All gone. Yesterday. There's nothing left. Well, you might find something that nobody else wanted on the board over there. Next. young gentleman reduced to such necessity. Oh, no. 
you make fun of me, sir. Well, no, stay. Don't run away. Look here. I may be able to help you. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning to you. Good Good morning, Uncle. This is my nephew, Mr. Nickleby. How do you do, sir? Brother Ned! Goodbye, my dear. Thank you. My dear. Goodbye. Mr. Nickleby! What brings you to London, sir? My father, he... A bad thing for a young man to lose his father. Oh, indeed, brother, indeed. You've brothers and sisters too, eh, I bet. A sister. Oh, poor, thing. poor thing. You're a scholar? Well, tolerably educated. Oh, a fine thing. Fine thing. <laughs> well, brother, what do you think? Will this gentleman do? Do? Oh, yes, brother Charles, he'll do. He'll do. <laughs> <laughs> You're offering me work, sirs? Yes, with our nephew in the counting house, a clerk. A clerk? Do you accept? Yes. Gladly. Good. Good. Well, that settles it, then. Settles it, then. Can you believe they offered me the position there and there? Congratulations! Oh, oh, rejoice! Rejoice! Of course, I expected it all along. Why, in a few years' time, they will take Nicholas into partnership and he will make his fortune in no time at all. You rang? Stop. I did ring. I knew you did. Then why'd you leave if you know? Thought you might have run. So you didn't. Drunken fool. Are there any letters come? Yes. Dead. Not very soft. Found this morning. A duel. With Hawk. He's run away to France. Very soft. He was making money. A fortune. Three thousand pounds. His debts died with him. Any other family? No. My uncles took me into their charge when I was very young. You must come and meet my mother and sister when we're settled into proper lodgings. I like that. Good morning. Good morning. Just you. Who's that young lady? Nicholas. A word, if you please. If you please. The young lady you saw leave just now, her name is Miss Madeline Bray. Her dead mother was our dear friend. We have, from time to time, prevailed upon Miss Bray to accept a small amount of money from us. In secret. In secret, yes. I'm afraid her life is wretched. She's forced to live in the debtor's house at King's Bench Prison with her father. The man's a wastrel. A wastrel. Pursued by his creditors. We have offered him charity, but his selfish pride has refused us. Refused us? Miss Bray's destitute. She is. She is. And she cannot leave her father. She will not. Will not. We would like to make this offer of money permanent, and we've come to the conclusion that the best way is to make a regular purchase of her little drawings. At a high price, of course. Oh, of course. We should ask our nephew Frank to help us. He's a fine fellow. A fine fellow. 
But we're afraid he might be too... Uh, uh, flighty. flighty. In such a delicate matter and fall in love with her. I see. Do you? Then we trust you will help us, Nicholas. Oh, it's bossy too! Wasn't a little whack Oh, you were, Father. Me and today, vinegar and brown paper. Whaskers in a heap on my kitchen floor. You might have thought it was a big fat parcel. Eh? Huh? Nothing. Here, make yourself useful. Go and buy something to eat. An ice rich tart. What a miracle of high feeding. Thank you, sir. Now, Mr. Squeers, concerning my nephew's behavior, I see you're not ready to forgive and forget. Uh, you'd be right. And if you could, you would like this stolen boy with a penny. Get out of my house. Oh, I would like him return that carrot. So tell me, who is he? I have no idea. A man came asking about him a few weeks back, but nothing came of it. You've no address for him? No, nothing. It could be anybody. Good. Well, I have some information. My nephew and this boy, they're in London. You're from Yorkshire, I understand, Mr. Smike. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever dined with the Grimbles at Grimble Hall? Mother, very proud man, Sir Thomas Grimble, with six grown-up and most lovely daughters. Look towards the light, my dear. And the finest park in the county. Do you know it? No, I don't think I do. Oh, what a pity. My dear mother, do you suppose Smike, living at Do the Boys Hall, is likely to receive many invitations from the nobility? Head up, dear. Don't see why not. Head down a little bit. When I was at school, I always went at least twice a year to the Tooleys at Taunton Vale, and they were a great deal richer than the Grimbles of Grimble Hall. Head to the side, my dear. Do you remember much about your family, Smike? No. Except... The man that took me to the school, he brought me from London. What do you want? Who are you, sir? I'm an art dealer, sir. I'm here to collect two of your daughter's drawings. Madeline, fetch them. Thank you. I'll open it. See that the money is correct. It's quite right, Father, I'm sure. Let me have it here. some grapes and a newspaper and some wine, the same as last week, my dear. Yes, Father. Perhaps your daughter wants something for herself, sir. It is no matter to you, sir. My daughter requires no kindness from you nor anybody else. Madeline, give the boy a receipt. Yes, Father. Shall I call again? When you are requested to call, sir. Uh, Madeline, when is this person to call again? Perhaps in a few more weeks. A 
few more weeks? Oh, I think not. Then sooner, sir, if you please. Thank you for coming, Mr. Nickleby. But we must disagree. Disagree? Your nephew is a noble lad. A noble lad? We find him an honest worker. And you have yet to know him, sirs. I think we do know him, sir. Don't you, Brother Ned? Most definitely, Brother Charles. Is this what you mean by charity, hmm? Employing a boy who's disgraced his family name? No, Mr. Nickleby. We prefer to call it having faith. Faith? In one's fellow, fellow man. man. Ah! You hope. Indeed, Indeed we, do, we do, sir. Men say you are truth itself, sirs. I say you're living under a delusion. Virtuous as you both are, you are not angels yet. Why do you waste your time pursuing your nephew, Mr. Nickleby? Surely he is the least of your worries. We know of your losses in the city. My financial affairs are my own, gentlemen. Good day, Mr. Nickleby. Good day. Meeting me here. My father's health is much worse today. I didn't want to disturb him. Are you going straight back to him? No, not yet. There are some things I need to buy. May I walk with you, Madeline? Yes. I'd like that very much. Nicholas, when you acted on stage, what parts did you play? Romantic. Did you find that amusing? No. I should like to have seen it. Well, then you shall. So, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Madeline is the sun. <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> well, laugh again, bright angel. Dear Smike, now you're sure you can manage the London streets? Yeah. I want to do it. I need to do it on my own. Very well.
father, eh? And didn't our thump his head, father? <laughs> like that? Like a good one. You'll go slap right up to heaven. Oh, no. What's up? Tilda. Funny. What are you doing here? Uh, we've come to London to enjoy ourselves after our wedding. What about you? Oh, fashion and business, ma'am. I'm afraid I won't be able to see you for a few days. My diary's very full with the visiting gentry. Well, girl, I think it's your turn to be married now and you'd better make haste. <laughs> yes, you must. Oh, I'm in no hurry, Tilda. No, Fanny? No, Tilda. I can wait. <laughs> and so could all the young men, it would seem. <laughs> no! Where are you going? I'm going to visit Lady Fairweather. Lady Fairweather? Where does she live? In her head. <laughs> hey, Brownie, what do you think? Who do you suppose we laid our hands on today? Eh? Smike. I got him tied up upstairs inside the wardrobe. <laughs> Landlord! Another pint. If you'll excuse me, ma'am, nature, she calls. I've looked everywhere. I can't find him. Then work. I possess a hold over you, Nickleby. A secret. I took advantage of my position with you. What assistance can you render me if I tell you? You have money at your side. I have hunger and thirst at mine. You can drive an easy bargain. I will give you nothing. If I die, my secret dies with me. Let me tell you what you've lost by my great crime. You are welcome to all you know. I'm threatened every day by one man or another, and I do not grow the poorer for it. Good night. Your family! Are those of the name Nickleby not dear to you? They are not. I will not part with a half penny, nor would I, to save you from rotting. 
Mr. Brooker. We were so worried about you, Smike. Well, yeah. When you didn't come back, we didn't have a moment's peace. Be finished. Did... Did you think about me, miss? But of course I did, Smike. We all did. Now rest. What's wrong? You're hiding something. I'm not. Tell me. I can't. I haven't told anybody, Kate. Very well. I think I've fallen in love. In love? My brother's in love. Who is she? Her name is Madeline Bray. <sighs> well, Mother, what do you think? Your little cottage in Bow. You'll be safe here. Nicholas, you must thank the Cherubles for their generosity. I don't know how you manage it, Miss Slidersky. Your beauty. It grows more rare each time I visit. It's a miracle. Truly. It has a strong, fruity flavor. You won't want any more. Thank you. Thank you for coming to see me so quickly, Mr. Nickleby. <clears throat> Time is money. Oh, it is. For those of us who make interest on it. I've heard of many losses in the city. I hope you're not one of them. <laughs> My money's safe, Mr. Cride. I heard different. Why have you asked me here? Get to your point, ma'am. Well, what would you say, Mr. Nickleby, if, if I was to tell you that I am going to be married? <laughs> to whom? Some rich old hag? Oh, no, 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 no. Wrong, for once. Quite out, Mr. Nickleby. She's a young, beautiful creature with a head of hair that one's fingers just, just itch to play with. <laughs> what has this to do with me? You remember that charming man who used his wife so ill? There are many. Oh, yes. This one owes you money, 975 pounds, four shillings and thrums. Walter Bray. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't forget him. <laughs> He's old now. He has a daughter, Madeline Bray. You must know her. A certain young man who bears your name visits her often. Go on. I want you to go and talk to the father for me. You can press a point better than most. 
I'm such a timid old creature. What is there to recommend you, Mr. Gride? The moment I am married, I will dissolve him of all his debts and give him a yearly allowance to live like a gentleman. But I need your help. You are Mr. Bray's main creditor. Mm -hmm. What would you want? How much would you take for me to buy his debt? I could go as high as 800 pounds for a friend such as you. There is more to tell me, isn't there? Would I deceive you, Mr. Nickleby? The pygmy impose upon the giant. <laughs> yes. Oh, very well. Then supposing I, I told you that I had knowledge of some property. See here. I have a, 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 a will. This property shall be mine if I succeed in marrying the daughter. I found it among Bray's papers. Found? Very well. I want the whole amount, my debt in full. And 500 pounds. You agree? Of course I agree. Why shouldn't I? You're my friend, Arthur. This is an offer of marriage that many a titled father would leap at for his child. Mr. Gride here has the fortune of a prince. And my daughter is a princess, sir. Precisely. Marriage made in heaven. He has money and she has... Beauty. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's for my daughter to make up her own mind. True. You still have the parental power to advise, to hint a wish. Do you think that I'm a broken spirit without the courage to do what is best for my only child? Let me tell you, gentlemen. There was a time when I had power and wealth and I demanded respect. You are a man still qualified to shine in society, sir. Freedom, with an allowance to support you in luxury, transform your life. Yes. A new existence. Look at him, sir. He's old. die soon, and your daughter will be a rich widow. Hark! I hear her coming. Father? It's nothing, my dear. A sudden spasm, my dear. Goodbye, gentlemen. Mr. Bray, I hope to hear from you very soon. One week? Yes. Give me a week. Shake the gentleman's hands, Madeline. Good day to you, ma'am. Good day, sir. Goodbye. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Young, loving affair. 
what happiness there. <laughs> and there, there, there. <sighs> the bottle green jacket, thank. I'll woo her in bottle green. <laughs> it's a good one. Got it cheap at a pawnbroker's. It's too good to be wooing in, Master. Haven't you got anything else? It's a pity to waste it. No, 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 no. I could look handsome for the wooing. Oh, if she's as handsome as you say, she won't look much at you, Master. Why not? She might be sick. <laughs> You're in a funny humour, ain't you, Pig? Isn't all this wooing enough to make me? Cos if you get married... I might be put out onto the street. Oh, 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 Peg. I would never do that to you, Peg. Wouldn't you? Why not? I could never afford to. Mm. Your services. <laughs> they come cheap, mm. eh? <laughs> door. What? The door. Na, na, na. Answer it. Na, 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 na. Oh, what? What do you want? Just the bride. What? Who? Bride. Bride. I've got an urgent letter from Mr. Ralph Nickleby. Oh. Come on. Ah, Mr. Knox, come in, come, come in, come in, come in. <laughs> Answer. Bear awaits. Is it bad news? <laughs> I'll uh, pen a line. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see anything in particular, Mr. Knox? Only a cobweb with a fly in it. Oh, yeah. There are a good many flies in here. And a spider. <laughs> what did he say, Master? The father does not object. I will be married soon, Peg. Now, let me think. What shall I write? I think my answer is yes. <laughs> 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 I'll go straight to Bray. Wilson! Sir? Well, then I'll go and see my uncle. What good would that do? He ate you! Where are the brothers? There's only chance of them being here tonight. It's impossible. They're both abroad on business. Well, then I'll talk to Madeline myself. I've got to stop her, Newman! Madeline, please. I beg you to listen. I've heard enough, sir. Can't you see? She doesn't need you anymore. Our lives have changed. Tomorrow, we leave this place. <laughs> so this is the independence of a man who... Nicholas! Of a man who would sell his own daughter! Madeline! For heaven's sake, sir, he's ill. Yes, I am ill. And I am being bullied by a shop boy. Madeline, I will not allow you to be forced into this fixed marriage. You have been bought and sold for the love of money. It is my duty, sir, and I will perform it. Oh, you won't. Father. Let go of her! Let go! Father. Madeline! Father. Madeline! Nicholas, stop. Let me go. You can't go through with this, Madeline. Please. I won't pretend that I'm not in great pain, Nicholas. Of course, I don't love this gentleman, Mr. Gride. But don't you see that by accepting him, I can release my father, who is dying in this place. I can prolong his life, perhaps for many years. 
What about your life? The feelings you've shown for me, I will never forget. But I cannot change my mind. If circumstances were different, I'm sorry. I must go to him. Is there nothing more I can do? At least wait until the brothers return. I can't. Why not? I'm to be married tomorrow morning. Beautiful. Good. Now, don't you complain of the expense afterwards. Oh, we have to live expensive for the first week, Peg. To keep my bride happy. <laughs> After that, we can make economies. <laughs> Loud trumpets blow, bells gaily ring, as we took Nickleby. I might have known. Good morning, Uncle. Uncle? Who, who are these people, Nickleby? This fellow here, I'm grieved to say, is my late brother's son. He brings with him his sister, like a cowardly boy tied to his mother's apron strings. I'm not here to speak with either of you. Madeline. He's me. You see? Do you hear? Do you hear what she says? Madeline. No. My father is dead. Dead? No. How did this happen, Nickleby? This man claims his wife from his own Why? Because her father owes him money. It's too late, Uncle. Look. Oh, dead? Oh, no, no, no. Madeline, here, come to me. Stay away. She shall be right. My bride, my lovely bride. My beautiful bride. No. Father. Father. Stay where you are. Father. Come back here. No! Come back here, I say! <laughs> Never. My beautiful bride! My beautiful bride! Oh, my bride! My bride! Oh, Nickleby, my beautiful bride! Nickleby! My mummy! Our beautiful mummy! 
You too, Mr. Nickleby, as if I am to blame for the loss of your money. I blame the girl's father for not living one hour longer, no one else. Well, what's to be done? Well, presently, the money is of no importance. First, I have a score to settle with that nephew of mine. Yes, the will. The property. If he marries Miss Bray, he'll get the... He will get nothing. Fetch that will. We must destroy it. Go on. Right. What? What is it, man? My papers. The will. She saw me put them in this box. Hank! She's stolen them! Damn, Mason. I know what it is. Why not? Because she can't read. We must be quick, Mr. Nickleby, before somebody tells her. We can't afford to be found out. We don't want the law after us. Patience, Mr. Gride. Money, money, a time money, when nothing money, could have moved money, me money, more money, than the loss money, of my money. Money, 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 oh, money, I money, swear, money, 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 I hate money, you more. Money, money, you money, money, let me do money, it. Money, money, you money, get the better of me. Money. I'll settle with him once money. and for all. such a great fuss made because Miss Madeline is going to marry somebody older than herself. Your poor papa was older than I, four and a half years older. I don't think you quite understand, Mama. I understand perfectly, Kate. Oh, Mr. Cherubal, how nice to see you. Good afternoon, ladies. How is she? She's sleeping. I was very impressed, Miss Nickleby, the way you helped your brother. Thank you. Very impressed. I'm sure we have done the right thing. I don't suppose you'd like to join me for a walk, Miss Nickleby? I'll watch over Madeline, my dear. Yes, Mr. Cherubal, I would. You would? Well, good. I haven't had much time to explore here. This is beautiful right there. Screws, how do you do? I'm pretty well, sir. The part of myself's a rush. How unfortunate. Let's talk business. Noggs. Noggs. Get back to the office. It's my dinner time. Your time is my time. Be gone, sir. I suspect everybody nowadays, sir, including the wife. What were you going to say, sir? I have more business for you concerning my nephew. Uh, I hope it doesn't involve a risk. Not like the last one. There is no risk, Mr. Squeers. And may I remind you that that business came about to repay a hurt that was done you. Uh-huh. And because you had a grudge to satisfy. I spend money to gratify my hatred. You pocket it to gratify yours. Who is the richer? What do you want? There is a will. It favors a young girl whom my nephew has an affection for. If he should marry her, he becomes entitled to property. Now, the will has been stolen by an old crone called Slighterskew. Peg Slighterskew. I want you to acquaint yourself with her. Retrieve the will and bring it to me. 
How much will you pay me? Fifty pounds. Seventy-five. Fifty. Seventy-five. Thank you for everything, Nicholas. I've done nothing I didn't want to, sir. Goodbye, Nicholas. Goodbye, madam. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. What will you do? What can I do, Kate? If I declare my feelings for Madeline, the Cheerables may think I've taken advantage of their trust. The situation is hopeless. They are rich and we are poor. Nicholas, come quickly. He's been staying indoors for days, Doctor. I told him to go out for a walk, but he wouldn't. Or he couldn't, and now, well... Mr. Nickleby, are you free to travel? Why? The boy should be taken from London at once. Cleaner air. Or will he get any better? I'm afraid your friend is very ill. I was happy here, Smike. We used to play here as children. Once. When Kate was little, we lost her. And after searching for hours, we found her sleeping under this tree. Now it shades my father's grave. <gasps> What's wrong? Oh, there in the trees. What is it? The man who there watching. There's nobody there. Remember you made me happy. And you, me, Smike. May, may I tell you my secret? Of course.
couldn't help it. I, I know he loves her, but... I loved Combustion flame. What? I said I've never seen such an ugly toad in all my life. <laughs> Don't say such things. Yes. Thank you. The last one was the first one of the day. I can tell. <laughs> oh, oh, you frightened me, sir. <laughs> it's a startling thing for a stranger to say that no all the while. <laughs> We were destined to meet, Peg. It was in the stars. In the stars. The moon and the stars. <laughs> Say it again. What do you see in the stars? <laughs> Cry. He wasn't married. No! Not married? <laughs> and a miserly old goat. <laughs> I've got my hands on what he wants. Show me. <laughs> what do you say? Oh, are you tickling me? Ah, you're tickling me. Ah, oh, oh, you're tickling me. Oh, <laughs> oh you're tickling me. <laughs> what? What? What, 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 what do you think? What are my words? Mr. Squeers? Go on, ah! <laughs> Never, never, Mr. Squeers. Mr. Squeers? <laughs> what is it? Come with me. Imprisoned. I'll devise a story, and if they want security, a thousand pounds even, you shall have it. But tonight you're a bit fuddled. Fuddled? Tomorrow morning, this is what you must do. No, no. 
I'll let you lead me on from one thing to another. And now look at me! Never again! Did you hear me never again? Everybody hears you, Squeers. Listen, there are rumors about me in the city. I have mounting debts. We must help each other. Squeers? Help yourself! Squeers! You always have. <laughs> What's going on? You have a visitor. What are you doing here? Get out, both of you. Listen to me, Uncle. I know something that concerns you. Something dreadful. Watch this. Who's there? What's this man doing here? Hmm? He's a convict and a thief. Hear him, uncle. No, sir. Yes, sir. Please begin, Mr. Brooker. There was a boy. Your son. I have no son. Yes, you had. You once were married, Uncle. Is that true? Now well, tell him, Nickleby. He married his wife for profit. And there was a child. Yes. A boy. He and his wife lived apart. She alone in the country, he in London, doing business. She was alone. Yes, I left her alone. And she eloped with a younger man. What is the point of this? You had me bring the boy to London and lodge him in the front garret of your house. Neglect had made the boy ill. And after a few weeks, you went away on business. Six weeks you were gone, remember? And when you came back, I told you, your son was dead. Yes, you did. He wasn't. I heard of a school in Yorkshire run by a man called Squeers. I took the boy there. Later, I was going to resurrect him for you. Get some of your money. But I got arrested on another matter and transported for some years. I just got back. I sought you out! I hinted what I might tell you, my great secret. And I only asked for a little money. But you refused me. I was desperate. Now Clark found me and gave me a pittance and told me of your nephew, Nicholas Nickleby. The boy Mr. Brooker stole from you. 
and left in a school in Yorkshire. That boy was Smag. Smag? I don't believe you. Where is he? Let me see him. You can't. Why not? He's dead. <laughs> Smack died a few days ago. Smack. Oh, my God. I can't live without her, Kate. I tried to imagine a time when I may be able to support her. But that day seems so far off. You may grow rich, you know. Yes, and I may grow old. I have something I must tell you, Nicholas. While you're away, Frank Cheerable asked me to marry him. And? Like you, I don't want to offend the Cheeribles. They've done so much for us, and they will expect Frank to marry someone with money. But you love him. Yes. Come, come, my 
dear sir. We must not be cast down, no, no. We must learn to bear misfortune. Yes, I suppose we must. Tell me, Nicholas, have you seen anything of Miss Bray lately? I haven't seen her for some time, Mr. Cheerable. What a pity. Why ever not? Well, then you won't know of her good fortune. Miss Bray has become entitled to a good sum of money and property worth... 12,000 pounds. Her grandfather's stolen will, yes. Quite a dowry, don't you think? I hope it will make her very happy, Mr. Cheerable. Good. Because here she comes. You have offended me, sir. Offended you? My nephew Frank tells me of a letter sent stating why you and your sister cannot see him or Madeline. That letter was private, sir. <laughs> Mr. Nickleby, you did not violate the confidence we placed in you. Or take an unworthy advantage of it. We are sure you did not. not. I told you once, if circumstances were different. Well, they are different now, Nicholas. Not for me. I have nothing I can offer you, Madeleine. Except yourself. I don't know what to say. So you feel the same? I do. I love you. I love you, Nicholas Nickleby. And when her term of mourning had ended, I offered Madeline my hand. And on the same day, and at the same time, amongst our family and friends, my dear sister Kate agreed to marry Mr. Frank Cheerable. <laughs> the weddings were held near our family home at the little church in Devonshire. <laughs> the money from Madeline's inheritance was invested well in the firm of Cheerable Brothers. Frank became a partner, and soon the business was known as Cheerable and Nickel. <laughs> My future prospered, and I was able to buy the childhood home where we'd spent many tender years. We all lived close to Smike's grave, and would often sit and remember our dear cousin. He was never forgotten. At last we could be truly happy. <laughs> <laughs>